Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at repairing the Yamaha RX-V1067 Hi-Fi amplifier. Now this amplifier is completely dead, there's no lights at all lit up on the front and um, I've actually got out the standby power supply um, and I found there's a fuse blown here um, and when I make some further checks I find that this um, MOSFET transistor here is short circuit. Um, so let's just take a quick look at this first because uh, I've ordered all the parts up and we've run into a problem before we've even started. Right, so obviously with a short circuit MOSFET, there's going to be a lot more wrong with this than just that. Now, I've had a good look around this board, and I've actually noticed on this diode here, um, I'll zoom the camera in, there's actually some corrosion. Can you just see it there, some green corrosion? Now, it's not actually coming from that electrolytic, so I'm presuming that somebody spilt something in this amplifier, um, and that's what's caused it um, a liquid damage. Um, so let's take a, a quick look at the back of the board first. Right, so that's the back of the board, that's the MOSFET. Um, now it looks pretty simple, uh, um, there's a chip there that's obviously driving the MOSFET. Um, so what we're going to have to do first, we're going to have to check the, the gate drive resistors that go from here um, to this chip. And um, there's probably one or two other things as well to check. So we're going to have a quick look at the service manual first and make a list of all the bits we're going to be changing. Right, so this is the service manual, so the MOSFET there has gone short circuit. Um, so we're going to have to change them, or check or change these two resistors here. Um, also there's two more resistors there in the gate, they're going to have to be checked or changed. Um, incidentally the diode that's got the corrosion on, um, that is uh, part of the gate circuit there, so that needs changing. And uh, almost certainly one or both of these will be faulty. Um, and as that goes straight back to the chip, it's not transformer driven, it's direct drive from that chip. Uh, that chip will almost certainly be faulty. Um, so we've got about half a dozen parts to change. And uh, I've just ordered them up from a, a distributor, these parts. And uh, that's where it's all go wrong. So, all gone wrong. So let's take a quick look what's happened. Right, so quite often when I'm doing a job, I order two of every part. And there's a good reason for that. Um, well, some of these parts are surface mounted. If I put that next to my finger, you can actually see in its carrier there how small that is. It's about the size of a pinhead. So you don't want to lose a part and then you have to place another order. So it's easy to just order two, two of everything to start with. And also, even if you don't lose everything, you've got enough parts to repair another one if another one comes in. So here we've got two MOSFETs. Now, the MOSFET is an STF9NK90Z. Right, so I get the two MOSFETs out the bag and straight away I can see that these aren't genuine ST micro parts. These are fakes. Um, they're actually quite good fakes, but they don't fool me. Uh, now, I do have a microscope, but it's actually pretty crap. And I found that um, on my mobile phone, um, I've had a new phone for Christmas and it has a high resolution camera and it's got a very good zoom. So what we're going to do is look at these two now on a mobile phone and I'll show you. Right, so here's the picture I've taken on my mobile phone. Um, now obviously, well you might not be able to see on here, but they've both got signs of uh, horizontal sanding lines. But if we take a look here, uh, they bear the logo ST Micro. F9NK90Z, it's got the same one on both. Um, also, these numbers here, C C O R H W, that's the same on there. Uh, I presume that's a batch number, M A R, phone's going off, M A R 025, that's got exactly the same number on, M A R 025. But if we move up here, you can see there, there's a hole there there's no hole on there and if we move to the top of the chip uh, that's marked 11 and a 1 and in them holes there there's no 11 and there's no 1 so although these appear to have exactly the same numbers on these are two different devices right so let's put these on the peak tester and see what it says 
Uh, right, so there we've got the gate on voltage, 4.560 volt. 4.560 volt. Right, let's swap that for the other one now and try the other. Right, so here's the other one. And that's the gate on voltage, 3.117 volt. 3.117 volt. So there we go, we've got two devices, they both have exactly the same numbers, uh, but the two totally different devices they are. Um, so they're going back and uh, we're going to have to try and find some from somewhere else now. Right, so this is where the problem starts. If we look at the data sheet, these were manufactured between 2005 and 2010. Uh, the last revision was 2010. So that's obviously the problem. Uh, these are obsolete and uh, when things become obsolete, that's when the Chinese start copying them. But um, we have, and I can't find these devices anywhere else from a reliable distributor. Um, but what I have found is, the one we want is in a plastic package. Now you can get exactly the same device in a TO220 with a metal tab. Um, now our, uh, in mine, the heat sink is grounded. So um, I could get them because I found them at radio spares. They do have a few left in stock. So that's it at radio spares. Um, 21 in stock for next day delivery. Um, the only thing I can do now is to get this one with a metal tab and to um, drill out the heat sink um, and fit um, um, an isolating washer and um, a plastic insert down the middle for the screw and to see if I can get a nut on. Right, well I've just ordered a couple of the non-isolated ones from Radio Spares and I'm going to have to modify this heat sink. Um, so, the one I wanted was the STF, the F standing for fully insulated, and the one I've ordered is STP, which is non-isolated. Um, but while we're waiting for them to arrive, um, I'm going to take this off the heat sink. Um, you have to be careful you don't lose the ferrite bead in the middle there. And um, we'll put them on the mobile phone and we'll see. Uh, I'll take a picture on my phone and we'll see what the real one should look like close up. Right, so that's the picture on my mobile phone. Um, that's the one I've taken out. That's the real one in the middle. And the two fake ones I've been sold are at the other side. Um, and as you can see, it's totally, totally different. There's a hole there. There's no holes on there. And the writing is completely different. So uh, that's about... That is just about all I can do now until the um, the uh, real ones arrive from RS components. Right, so the MOSFETs are due in later on today from RS components. So I thought while I'll wait, um, I'll change all these other parts that it needs ready. That's the new chip in, um, a couple of resistors down here, uh, the diode somewhere down there. All the parts are in, we're just waiting for the MOSFET. So we'll go to the list of what replaced. Um, I'll scroll through this slowly um, so you can see. Um, I have to swap hands on the camera. Right, I put the old parts at the side. That's the chip. That's one of the surface mounts. Another surface mount, the fuse, the diode. Uh, the capacitor that I said wasn't leaking. Um, although it's not leaking I've just changed this as a precaution um, just in case there is something going on with it because this board is actually mounted uh, where we go to the right plane this board is actually mounted vertical uh, and where the capacitor is there um, it is just under that diode so although it looks all right I've just changed it as a precaution um, the white here you can see uh, that's just uh, water residue where I've cleaned the board um, with a flux remover it just wants brushing off with a little brush 
and um, in case you're wondering I've been replacing the small parts with a pair of Ideal Tech SS SA tweezers um, just to give you an idea if I put that there these resistors are all 603 surface mount so let's just pick that up and put it on top of that penny and that gives you an idea of what size them resistors are that's why you need um, a really decent pair of tweezers micro fine tweezers right uh, there's also been some other good news which we'll just move over to the computer um, if you just take a look at this uh, they've actually uh, raised the credit note for the article for the uh, MOSFETs um, due to quality problems yeah so there we go and um, as soon as the uh, MOSFETs arrive from Radio Spares Components uh, we'll get that fitted and then carry on with the video right so the MOSFETs are just in um, as you can see that's the one I've taken out that's the uh, I think they call it TO220F fully insulated and uh, that's just a standard TO220 with metal back um, so all we've got to do now is just uh, modify this heat sink to take this um, live metal back MOSFET right so so far so good um, I've drilled out the heat sink to uh, three and a half mil. I fitted a, a mica washer. Um, I fitted the insulating kit. I've had to put that in reverse, and the head of the screws at the back. I've had to grind that down to get it in that space. Um, very important that we don't forget to put the ferrite bead on. Um, the reason I've shorted these three connections together is we're just going to do um, an insulation test now between the um, the live tab of the MOSFET and the earth heat sink. Right, so here we go. We're just going to do the insulation test and make sure we've got um, full insulation from this um, this uh, kit I've fitted onto this heat sink. So let's turn this on. Um, now, obviously, I can't hold the camera and press the button at the same time. So what we're going to do is put it into hands-free mode. There, so we've got um, live terminals all the time now. So I've already clipped one onto the earth. Um, I've shorted all the pins out like I said just so we don't damage the device and uh, we just need to touch on there 500 volts and there you go we've got insulation of more than 200 megs at 500 volts so that's absolutely perfect all we need to do now is uh, put the ferrite bead on and fit that back in the unit and let's see where we go from there right so there we go MOSFETs fitted um, I've just cleaned up the board again with some flux remover um, dried it all off and if you take a look at that you can't even tell anything's been replaced on there that's the MOSFET that's the new IC surface mounted resistors it actually looks now just like it came out of the factory right so before we power up we'll just have a quick look at the service manual uh, the output from the standby power supply is 5.5 volts so we just need to check on the unit that's correct now just in case anything goes wrong I've wired the incoming mains in series with a bulb uh, we're all ready to go so let's try this here we go quick flash from the bulb as the capacitor charges up um, I don't know if I can do this holding the camera or not I've got the meter on and it should be these two here which I'm trying to do with one hand great difficulty and that's it 5.503 um, so that's running absolutely perfectly um, that's the fault and the power supply fixed all we've got to do now is uh, get some speakers and a source connected to the amp and uh, we'll just run some tests on it 
all right guys many thanks for watching my video and um hopefully catch you all in the next video